Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, it's the power of the clean water of the Great Lakes. It's super fluid. Super fluid is a 9.1% double IPA from Shorts Brewing Company in Elk Rapids, Michigan. Well, friends, it's the new year, and with the new year comes new beer. Seems like between this and Hop Slam, we're looking at a double IPA time of year. Although it seems like every time of year is a double IPA time of year anymore. Short seems to have this never-ending revolving door of new releases. I make a lot of trips to beer stores, and as you can imagine, I see a new release almost every time. I find myself a lot of times walking into stores and seeing on the shelf some Shorts beer I'd never heard of or that I didn't even know was coming out. They surely don't sit around waiting for the next beer trend to come out, and sometimes they try and set them from, for themselves. Now, Shorts describes Superfluid as having flavors of coconut, pineapple, and tropical fruit. And to me, that almost sounds like a pre-New England-style IPA, but this has been around for a few years, so maybe this was a trend that they were starting. Let's take a look at the bottle here, and we will get down to business. This one was packaged on 12 28 2017, so that was just right before the end of the new year. Uh, on the label, it shows the Great Lakes region. Michigan is the most detailed with rivers and some, some lakes and tributaries all filled in here, and it just says, Shorts Brew Superfluid. Double American India Pale Ale. Clean water makes better beer. And it does. It probably explains why the beer in Michigan is so good, right? So let's crack this open. I got my handy dandy bottle opener. I've been taking suggestions on other types of bottle openers that I should be getting. I think I've got, got one in my sights. So don't worry, this one might not be around for much longer. Let's crack the top. Has the typical shorts label. The person with the shorts on kind of, I would say they're dancing around. That'd be my guess. And uh, let's grab a just a regular pint glass. Let's give it a smell. That sm yeah, it smells really kind of coconutty. I'm picking coconut up just out of the neck of the bottle. Let's pour it in the edge of that bubble. It's really light, light in color, that is. It's got actually the heads filling up. I didn't pour it so great, but the heads filling up quite nicely. It's got about a finger of head. There are a lot of big bubbles on the top here. And sometimes you'll get big bubbles. Up. Whoa, I'm picking up. I am picking up coconut big time on this right now, but sometimes you'll get these um, big bubbles on the top and, and you'll see them on the side, but this is really densely packed. I have a, a lot of bigger ones on the top, but really small on the side, real dense. And I am picking up a coconut kind of scent out of this, again, just like I did out of the neck. Maybe a little bit of pineapple, and I, I think they're right. I, I do smell, at least, I do smell coconut, I do smell the pineapple, and I am picking up on some of the tropical kind of scents to it. Meanwhile, the clarity, it's pretty clear. It's not its not as clear as Hop Slam was. Uh, it is a little bit denser, a little bit thicker, a little hazier. A lot of bubbles on this, which I think Hop Slam, I don't think I had so many bubbles. It was kind of like it settled and that was it. Um, yeah, but this one, I'm getting a lot of carbonation up the side. Let's take a, let's take a drink. So I do pick up coconut on the, on the taste, maybe tangerine or orange, like a bit, bit of a bitter orange. Coconut is actually a hint. There's just kind of a hint of coconut. It kind of rolls back on my tongue. And I am picking up on the bitterness, on the hoppiness. And again, that bitter orange is a really kind of dominant taste to me. It's um, sometimes you get like a orange zest, orange peel zest, or like a citrus zest. But this one is like, I only know this because my dad will eat like, if we go to a restaurant and he gets a slice of a lemon, he will eat the entire peel and the lemon because he's odd like that. But I'm actually kind of picking up, I, I've done it just because he does it and I want to try it. 
the the aftertaste tastes like if you took an orange and instead of peeling it and eating the orange, eating the fruit in the center, you just ate the peel and the orange. So it's really zesty, really strong, citrusy, orangey bitterness. But the initial taste is really sweet. You get that coconut, you get a bit a bit of the orange as it hits the crest of your tongue and goes down. That's when the kind of the bitterness begins to activate. It's slight bitterness on the crest of your tongue. It's not a lot of bitterness. But then the aftertaste that sets in is that really zesty, bitter orange taste. And just that kind of anecdote, you know, my dad eating the slice of the lemon or whatever we get at a restaurant, that just, that, that kind of makes me like this almost a little bit more because I have that experience and that's kind of, you know, that's what all this is about, right? It's your experiences that that kind of feed into the tastes that you pick up and what it makes you think about, what it makes you nostalgic over sometimes. And and I think if it weren't for that, I maybe I wouldn't be so into this, but because I kind of equate that, I have that kind of connection. I actually do really enjoy this. I think if you're not into orange and you're not into orangey bitterness, if you're not into really zesty flavors, this might not be for you. Um, but if you're an IPA fan, I mean, you're probably used to that anyways. But yeah, it's really subtle. The sweetness is subtle. It's not super sweet. I take back what I said about being a pre-New England style IPA. This has no resemblance whatsoever to a New England style IPA at all. Uh, there's no juiciness. There's no, you know, there's none of that tropical juiciness. But you do pick up slightly on a hint of that coconut at the very beginning. Then it's almost all dominated, I thought, at least in my opinion, it's all dominated by orange after that. A little bit of sweet orange at the beginning and bitter super bitter orange at the tail end. And that super bitter orange actually kind of clings in your mouth and it kind of like thickens your saliva a little bit. I didn't mention the mouth feel, but it's a little th on the thicker end, but it's still good. It's it's nice and, you know, it's, it's thick, but it's not too thick. And I think that all that orangey sweetness kind of lends to that the orangey zest, the bitter orange zestiness at the end kind of lends to that too. Well, friends, that is the 2018 version of Superfluid. Well, maybe late 2017, early 2018 version of Superfluid. It'll probably take me about six months to get used to saying 2018. So, like I said before, Shorts is always putting out something new. Is there anything out there from Shorts that you're looking forward to this year? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if you're going to be making it to the Michigan Brewers Guild Winterfest in Comstock Park. While you're down there, why not like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends? It's all absolutely free to viewers just like you. I've also got links to my social media and my website at drafttherapy.com. The best part about it all after all this holiday spending is that it's absolutely free. So until next time, I'm Shaw from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries, and don't forget to treat yourself to a little giraffe therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.